All right, boys and girls, welcome to the Daily Crack. This is my second take. Um, I fucked up the first one. Don't ask me how. I've been doing this for ages, but the fucking thing was upside down. And I, 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 it, it made me stop because I see the timer at the bottom. And it, listen, the way I do these videos, it's normally one take. No matter what comes out of my mouth, that's what gets fucking posted. And that's fucking it. So I fucked up. So this is, for the first time in ages, my second take. So it should be better, technically. But anyway, it is what it is. Today is Thursday, the, the 30th of April. Um, and welcome to the Daily Crack. Thank you to the people that commented on my video yesterday because uh, I was asking for topics to talk about. So I've got a good few to get through over the next couple of Daily Cracks. So thank you very much for that. And to everyone else, please keep commenting. If there's something that pops up that you want me to talk about and give my opinion on, fitness related, non-fitness related, Please comment below in my Instagram, um, IGTV, in the fucking, day, what are we on here, the, um, the Facebook, or, um, or just private message me, it doesn't fucking matter. If you have a topic that you want me to talk about, I'll do my best to cover it. So thank you to the people that did make a comment, and um, yes, I look forward to more. Goodie. Goody gumdrops. So yes, today I'm going to cover David's one. Um, we're going to talk about whether it's better to PR your bench or PR your friend time. Now, let me just state that I am very biased towards strength and hypertrophy. That's the way my gym works here. We have a huge focus on strength. We use the barbella heap. We're going to do powerlifting movements. We do a lot of strongman movements. We use the yoke, we use sandbags and whatnot because my belief is the stronger you are, the harder you are to kill. Simple. Um, and that's not my quote. That is quote from Matt Swift, who uh, I done my level one back in 2010 with. So yeah, I, I've been 10 years now CrossFit qualified. And um, you know, it, it, like the, the Fran workouts and the, the, the benchmark workouts within CrossFit, I'm not going to go into what it is. I'm sure most of you fucking already know. And if you don't know, Google that shit. Um, and the, to me, what they are is uh, benchmarks to test where uh, people are. But in my experience of doing CrossFit, it, it's not something I like to program um, very often. And definitely, currently, it's not something I make a, a big deal about. When people come to my gym, I want them to come here to a stress-free zone. We come, we exercise, we do accessory work. Uh, some, day we don't, some days we don't even run the clock. Some days workouts aren't even time. It's just about getting the work done. Because sometimes adding in that motherfucking clock puts a huge amount of stress on people. And I know for a fact that you put in one of those benchmark workouts like Grace or Fran or, or whatnot, and you will have people shitting themselves the entire day, maybe even the entire week, because they know the workout's coming up on Friday, about this fucking workout. Now, what is that doing to someone? So they have stress of their life, their, their, uh, currently the coronavirus, um, their work, family stuff, you know, that ca the car that needs to be booked in for a service, the kids that need to be brought to f a football training at a certain time. And now I've added in on top of that, a fucking workout? That has now started. Well, what has my fitness facility become? It's it's moving away from what people are are needing and and turning. It's been turned into something that people fucking don't need. So my opinion on those workouts and you know f having a focus on them to like you know fucking crush them and all this is it's not necessary. If your focus is strength, that is something that's going to stick with you forever because strength builds slowly. And as I said, it. The, like that, the, the stronger you are, the harder you are to kill. And I also believe that the stronger you are, the better you become at these movements because your body's capable of moving more. Now, look, we're talking specifically here about PB and your bench press. How would that translate to getting better at Fran? Well, a Fran is a truster. You're moving the weight overhead. overhead. So if your upper body is going to be stronger uh, when you're doing a truster, do you think you'll be able to hold onto the bar for longer? I think so. Um, and if you're bench pressing properly, like you're using your core, your legs and everything, you're bracing hard, and if you have a good coach that is teaching you how to bench press well, it's going to translate to the entire body getting strong. So to answer your question, I would be aiming to PB my bench over PBing my friend. Now, you are gonna do friend. It's gonna it's gonna come up. Let me take some of the stress out of it for you. What I like to do now when we program this stuff is make 
their goal something different. Um, I kind of don't give a fuck about PR in your friend because the more you do friend, the, the harder it becomes for you. And it, it leaves a scar because when you do well in friend, like if you get a sub three or four minute friend, that shit is horrific because you know how hard you've had to work. And by the end of the fucking workout, your, your form is gone to fuck. Your, your trusters, you're collapsing, you're pushing up. And if you're doing, you're, you're doing kipping butterfly pull-ups, you're dropping down hard each and every time. And it, it, it's, it's just horrible. So this would be my advice. Can you go unbroken in all the movements in Fran? That would be a better PB. Now I'm gonna say to you, don't worry about your time. Forget about the time. Let's say I pretend the clock isn't even running. Can you go unbroken in Fran? Now, what does that look like and what does that mean? That means I need you to focus on each and every rep. So you don't think about round 15 or round nine at all yet. You focus on your first, the, where you're standing on that very first rep. Getting the bar onto your shoulders, cleaning it onto the shoulders and moving real well without wobbling, without losing balance. And then every single rep you do is a breath. Inhale on the, the descent, exhale on the drive up. Now it's gonna mean you're gonna move maybe slightly slower, but if you're breathing on each rep, you're recovering. When you finish that first round of 21 thrusters, you need to take a breather because you're not gonna to run to the bar, you're gonna walk, or to the pull-up bar, you're gonna walk over to it. And you're not gonna get on it straight away because you want your heart rate to drop slightly and you wanna be mentally set up so you can do the next block of 21 pull-ups comfortably. If you're doing butterflies or kips, you can exhale over the bar each time, which again, excuse me, allows for recovery. Now you've already completed your first round unbroken. The reps decrease. You can do it for the next round and the last round. What have you learned at the end of that workout? Number one, you're gonna be tired, you're gonna be broken, but you won't be destroyed. So you haven't scarred yourself for the next time it comes up. If you've managed to get through the workout unbroken, you've learned to pace yourself. You've learned to learn how to recover throughout the workout and you've figured out your pace, which is, which is essential when it comes to CrossFit. It's not about looking at the person beside you and however fast they're going, you're trying to fucking keep up with them. No, it's about you. Because I can guarantee you, that motherfucker that's going flat out be, beside you, that takes off and goes ahead of you in the, in the, the start of the workout, you will catch him up, but you will not catch him up if, you're, if you do the same as him and you fuck yourself in the first 30 seconds of the workout. So, and, the, and likewise, take for example, Grace or something like that, where it's 30 clean and jerks for time. Rather than think about doing 30 clean and jerks as fast as possible, think about this. How many reps can you do without dropping the bar? Just changes the angle, changes the element, changes the stimulus that you're looking for. So, I hope, this helps. Uh, for those of you that um, were wondering as well, maybe thinking about it or weren't thinking about it, but I'm after bringing it up, um, you know, PB your bench press or PB your Fran. May that shed some light on it. I'm always going to say strength first. The stronger you are, you, the, the more protected your joints are, and the better you will move. Um, but when it comes to repeating these benchmark workouts, try and take a different angle. Maybe make Fran 60 kilos and do strict pull ups. Fucking different stimulus all together. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, David, thank you very much for the question. And yes, we have more coming. Please share this video if you liked it, if you thought it was inform informative in any way, shape or form. Give us a like. And if you have any questions yourself, don't be afraid to ask. Pop them in the comments. Private message me or even on our uh, um, Instagram page. Send messages there. And um, until tomorrow, giddy up. <laughs>